Hello and welcome to my Carolina garden. This is going to be my garden tour of my backyard in August. So I have some really nice things to show you and I would like to say that it has been so super hot here that everything that is looking good is extremely heat tolerant. So I have poolside gardens, I have some tropical looks, I have some fence side gardens that maybe don't have as much of a tropical feel to them. So I have a lot of different things I'd like to show you and I am looking forward to it. Over in my first poolside garden that I'd like to show you, I'm gonna start with the most complicated name of a plant that there is. So I will mess it up, but I'm sorry about that. I'm gonna call this Bougainvillea. Maybe it's Bougainvillea. I mess it up every single time, but that's what this plant is right here. It is currently not blooming, but it has very like delicate looking flower petals. They are like a dark magenta on this plant. I am going to actually attempt to propagate this plant in my greenhouse this winter. So I'm gonna take some cuttings from it and see if I can do that. I also need to start doing a little bit more work to get this gorgeous baby a little more ruly, shall we say. I think I need more of a trellis than this so I can allow it to keep getting bigger, taller, stretching out, but maybe having something to hold on to instead. So Bougainvillea. This right here is sedum. I've talked about it before. This is the lemon ball sedum. It is a ground cover. It can be put into pots like this. It just gives it a very full look. And again, this sedum is evergreen, so it is always going to stay this vibrant color all throughout the year. I have a few things happening right here. Behind me, I have my red canna lilies. I've talked about my canna lilies before. I love them. I have them in many places in my yard and I love their tropical vibe. So the red cannas are right beside these awesome perennial hibiscus. I have also talked about them before because they are also some of my favorite. Now this one in particular happens to be on its second flush, which means it has already done a really showy job of blooming earlier this summer and now it's going for its second round. So beside my perennial hibiscus, I do have some purple heart down here. So that is the purple succulent style plant. And beside that, I have blanket flowers. I also have blanket flowers in many places in my yard. So the blanket flowers are gonna bloom for me until frost. Here I have some mandevilla. The mandevilla is inside of a pot and I have some creeping jenny draping out of the pot right here. The mandevilla is not going to be perennial for me, but it is an unbeatable flower because the vibrance of this bloom is just outstanding. And especially by my poolside garden, I simply can't beat it. So I think I will try to take the mandevilla indoors this winter. I was able to do it with its like sister flower, the um, Diplodenia. They look really similar with their rocket shaped flowers. The Diplodenia was able to be overwintered and it is reblooming gorgeously for me in my front yard in a large pot. So just beyond my Mandevilla there, I do have a Sago Palm there in the pot. So that baby has lived with me for a few years already. I have kept it in a pot and moved it inside, but I do have one in the ground as well that has survived for me, so it does last the winter. These are hardy banana trees, so I have multiple hardy banana trees. These babies like to propagate all on their own, and it is not difficult. They just, their roots come out and they just shoot up new babies, and sometimes digging them up and separating them can be a challenge because unfortunately with their long roots, they can be easy to break when you're using a shovel, but they can be separated carefully and divided, given away, moved to different parts of your landscape, etc. So my next section right here, right below my banana trees is my succulent garden. Now, I enjoy succulents so much and I created this in a very fun way using some garden elements, some stones and things that I thought were gonna be great. I put it into a sunny spot so it's got its sunlight requirement covered. It's next to my coping here by the pool which I thought the heat would be great for it. The only thing is when we get our heavy rains and the water stands for a bit too long, 
the plants don't like that. So I'm actually gonna have to do some work raising up some of my succulents, adding in some more well-draining soil, adding in some more stones for them, but keeping them up so they are never sitting in pools of water. What comes next right after my succulent garden is what is called an oyster plant. I have two oyster plants, one here, one here. They have purple on the bottom of their foliage and then a nice striped variegation on top. These are stunning little low growing plants, perfect for the front of my flower bed. This here is purslane. Purslane is an interesting kind of succulent stylish plant. It does have a tropical vibe to me. I have it in multiple places in the ground. It's doing awesome. The flowers are large and very colorful. In the pots, however, it is awfully leggy and not that showy. This right here is a hibiscus, as you can see. Now, this is just a regular tropical style hibiscus. It is was never intended to be a perennial for me here in southeastern North Carolina. However, after the first winter that it lived with me inside my flower bed, I did do some overwintering. Overwintering in this case was adding additional layers of mulch as well as using what they call a frost blanket. A frost blanket just is a lightweight blanket to lay over top of the foliage. So this way the foliage is not getting killed from the frost and then the mulch is supposed to be taking care of the root system so that the root system doesn't die. I only had to use the frost blanket that first year to protect this plant. And then it seemed to get a little stronger, a little more hardy for me. And now this is the fourth summer I've had this come back for me. So that's that. Same thing here with this sago palm. Now it is small. It's definitely not increasing in size the way I see it at some people's places. But again, it has stayed living in the ground for me for at least four years now. Okay, so over in this area, well, starting with my aqua blue flamingo, I guess, I'll call him aqua blue. He came from Lowe's. I'm really happy to have him because he just adds the right pop of color, in my opinion, to my poolside garden. So I have my blue flamingo. Over here, I have another perennial hibiscus. So this Luna Rose hibiscus is on its second flush of flowering as well. It went for a really large amount of time with tons and tons of blooms on it. Then went about the end of July, had nothing at all. And now here we are again in mid-August and these blooms are just beginning again. So this, I love. This gorgeous baby right here is an oleander. This one is in the shape of a tree. Oleander is perennial in this area. However, I have never had it before. This is my first year having the oleander. So I'm not exactly sure what's gonna happen, but I do think I'm going to treat it similarly as I did with the non-perennial hibiscus and really just baby it this winter. Use a frost blanket, use extra layers of mulch around the roots and see if I can't keep it happy so it keeps coming back for me. Ah, so over here, some of my favorite things. So I have the Fiesta hibiscus in this pot right here. It does have creeping Jenny coming out of the pot down below. Both of these things have lived in the pot for me. I'm not sure if this is my third year, I believe it is. I have had to take the hibiscus indoors. Uh, I had it inside the house previously. And then last year is when I had the greenhouse for the very first time. So I was able to bring it into the greenhouse. And I also had to deal with aphids inside my greenhouse. So it was a bit of a struggle to keep this alive, but even more so these hibiscus in the waterfall behind me. Unfortunately, ugh, the hibiscus in the waterfall behind me are also just regular tropical style hibiscus. Again, not meant to be perennial. However, I did take them out of the waterfall last summer, at the end of the summer, I guess it was actually fall, moved them into the greenhouse to live for the winter. They got a massive infestation of aphids. And it was just super, super, super annoying. I chose to go the route of not having to use any kind of pesticide to kill the aphids. And I kept having to bring the hibiscus in their pots out into the lawn and just keep bathing them essentially and get all the aphids off. After multiple times of doing that over say a week or two weeks, it did solve the problem. And obviously the plants are quite happy now. Because the hibiscus plants are so large now, 
I really don't want to take them out of the waterfall again. I get tired of doing all of that kind of stuff. I'm going to attempt to overwinter these guys right in the waterfall also. The problem with this is the bottom part of the waterfall or the, the backside and underneath is hollow. So I think I'm going to have to invest in some insulation for under the waterfall and then possibly do that frost blanket over them as well just so I don't have to move them and use all that muscle. Over here, I have more of that sedum that I have seemingly all over. So I have this, let's just call it autumn sedum, because you know I'll put the right word up on the screen, and this yellow mandevilla. So this right here is just the, a look at the waterfall from behind. So this is the underneath part that we intentionally left open so we can have storage under there for pool supplies and whatnot. But inside the actual waterfall, I have the two hibiscus and I also have this sago palm. Once again, I don't wanna dig out the sago palm either. So hopefully I could get those three items to stay living in the waterfall all winter. These elephant ears, I think they're called Jack's Giant and these I love. How can you not love the shape of this leaf with the sheer size? Now this one is different from some that I have in the front yard, which I said kind of just feel more weedy and I'm not really in love with. These to me do scream tropical vibe though, so these ones in particular I really love. So I do have a variety of canna lilies over here. So they vary in height, they vary in flower color, they vary in foliage color. So I have this filled with a lot of them. And besides my variety of those, I do have some of these other elephant ears here. Again, these are the ones that are not exactly my favorite. Then I have a golden sword yucca here. And for me, the yucca in combination with the canna lilies right behind it is just a stunning combination. And it's because the textures of the leaves are so different. So I love having these together. More blanket flowers, another sago palm, more elephant ears. So you see, as I get more and more things that I can divide up, put into other places, I definitely do that. So this little area right here is a great example of taking things that I have growing like crazy in my garden and putting it into other places. So I have the blanket flower here, which obviously is seen in multiple spots in my garden, as you know and I have the purple heart. The purple heart was growing just in a small little bunches over in the poolside garden to start this video off. As you can see, this one is huge and very, very purple. This is growing out of a pot and it's actually draping down the whole side. I did have this plant in the greenhouse for the winter. This purple heart did amazingly all winter. No dying back, no bug problems, no issues whatsoever. So I have it over here looking gorgeous. Over in this area here, I start with more banana trees. This was my first area where I had any. I started with only two. Multiple, multiple babies have spread those uh, babies around and have also given them away to other people. So I have my banana trees. I have some more canna lilies here. I have some more purslane down here and yet another pot with gorgeous purple heart Oh, and I didn't even mention the cordy line is what is inside the pot with the purple heart. Cordy line did suffer in the greenhouse this winter. It did have some issues with bugs, but it lived in the pot with the purple heart. Like I said, the purple heart was perfectly fine, but both of these pots full of the cordy line and the purple pot, purple heart are able to be on either side of my pool corner. So that's this section over here. My greenhouse area. Honestly, nobody wants to see inside the greenhouse right now. It is over 100 degrees outside. Inside there, it's even worse. So I really don't do anything in the greenhouse when the temperatures are warm, never mind hot. So we're gonna save a greenhouse tour for a different day. I like to refer to this area just in front of my greenhouse as my working garden. Does everybody have working gardens? Sometimes you just have extra plants or you don't know where to put them yet. Maybe someone gives you something and it doesn't have a place just yet, so you put it in the ground so it survives until you can dig it up and put it elsewhere. 
Also, I have some pots of things that haven't found a home just yet. So working garden and then starts my arborvitae, which will bring us right to my next awesome flower bed. So not only is this flower bed full of my beautiful rocks that I just love so much, but I also have my Black Eyed Susan, my blanket flowers. They are both stunners right now. I have that sunshine ligustrum right in the middle of the two clumps of Black Eyed Susans and that is also doing amazingly. It just adds that perfect amount of color in a spot that otherwise wouldn't have any. And this planter right here, I'm going to have to show you her because she is my new favorite thing. So I went to Home Goods the other day looking for summer clearance items, especially for my garden. I always like to see what kind of variety of pots they have there and this time they had this beautiful lady planter. Now, I don't know what it is and why I got into these head planters. I've seen them in a lot of places these days and for some reason, I'm drawn to them. So I found her, she's got a beautiful ponytail draping over her shoulder and I just couldn't resist her. So I got her, filled her up with some plants right here um, I have some begonias which are actually doing well despite this bright sunlight that you see coming this direction at this point They get some afternoon shade. So they're doing well I have some creeping Jenny in here as well as this sedum. So I love my new planter The main reason I love this whole flower bed over here is because of these privacy screens They just add a little bit of design flair that I like a lot. So any kind of fun elements that I could put into my garden, I wanna do that. And in fact, I expect to spend a lot of time this winter making some things to put into my garden. I am an artist by profession actually. And so while I typically paint, I, I also like to make things. I like to use tools. I like to figure out how to build things. So I'm not really sure what's in store, but I figure I'm gonna take the cooler temperatures to be able to do things like that. And then when summer comes and it's so blazing hot like this, I don't have to do that kind of work and I can just enjoy the things I set in there. So the only thing I really have blooming in this garden right now is my crepe myrtle, which is gorgeous. Do not get me wrong, I'm not upset about it, but I am lacking summer color, late summer color in this garden. And I need to add mower. section of my garden on the back side of my house is not an area I show often at all and that's because I consider it to be a work in progress but not really with any particular focal point in it now the one good thing about this garden is it offers me some shade as the Sun goes over my property this is the back of my house and my house shades this area so I am able to actually have some shade loving hostas in here I have a gorgeous pot of begonias there I do have a hydrangea there, so at least I'm allowed or I'm able to enjoy some of these shade loving plants because otherwise I really have almost no shade at all. I did attempt to rescue two hookahs from my front flower beds because it was just too sunny there all day long and it was just a bit too much for these plants. So I have one frog, so I have one over here and one on the other side of the grill. So at least I hope these guys can get some relief back here. I'm thankful for this umbrella right here to give me a little bit of shade. This is where I'm ending my backyard garden tour for August. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you saw some beautiful things that maybe sparked some inspiration for you. And if you have any thoughts about something that might work really well for me here, Zone 8A, Southeastern North Carolina, please let me know in the comments below. This channel is all about sharing garden ideas. So let's share the inspiration. Happy planting.